<laughs> Welcome to Monday, Monday with, with the Mavens. Mavens. <laughs> Today, we are so excited to be talking about our pillars of wellness. All five of them, you guys. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. Yes, we are all about nutrition. We are all about making those um, shifts to get our clients to their goals. However, along the way, it is so satisfying when we can work with our clients to really make those life shifts, those small habit shifts, so that when they graduate, not only have they met their physical goals, but they just have a much healthier lifestyle and they are able to achieve things like proper hydration, proper hydration, hydration deep and restorative sleep, being less inflamed, have been more stress resilient and moving their bodies. And that's really our five pillars and we're gonna dive into them. Today we are gonna tackle all five of those. You yes. guys are gonna come out with a bunch of nuggets, things you can apply to your lives today, tomorrow, and forever, yep. and you will be just better after this. That's mm -hmm. our goal. Yeah, and here's the thing. We said this in our stories earlier, but you guys, there is no reason we, there's no reason that we can't all thrive. And like, that's something Haley and I are so passionate about is like us ourselves, of course, we want to live a thriving life, but if we can have even the tiniest bit of impact on the people around us, the people that we care about, the, you know, broader community, whatever that looks like, and like truly thriving in life, like feeling your best, being cognitively clear, being hormonally balanced, be like getting adequate sleep, having your nervous system work the best for you, your digestion being on track. You guys, there are a million yeah. things that you can do, and we're going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks and how to apply them today to feel your best starting now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to knock them down one at a time. Yep. And okay. we're not going to make this too long. We could nope. talk, we actually could talk on each one of these five pillars for I mean, forever, hours. really, for in fact, hours. we have. If you're interested in doing a deeper dive in any one of these things, we have done an individual live, and we have, um, we actually have full educational platforms for each individual one. We've taught on each individual one. Um, we have a ton of information. And so I'll just start by saying that on our toolbox of our website, macromavens.life, if you click on the toolbox, we have a ton of free resources there. Um, most of our pillars of wellness, there's going to be an individual overview on it there. Um, the non-inflammatory one is for our clients only because it's a whole protocol. Um, but if that's something you're interested in, we'd love to chat with you more about. And so let's just start with that. Number one, let's start with a non-inflammatory lifestyle, what that means, why, and how you can achieve it. Yeah. And you guys, this really is probably the most important of our pillars. It really goes hand in hand with what we, um, educate our clients on as far as nutrition goes, but you know, sorry, if you can hear my, my dog is like right next to us chewing on a bone. And so it might be a little like, but that's all right. He's real cute though. Yeah. So <laughs> one thing that we want our clients to understand is that the foods that you eat and the drinks that you choose to put into your body have an effect on your entire bodily system. Yeah. And it can either be really good for you or it can be damaging to you. And we're not necessarily in the business of saying this food is good, this food is bad. Yeah. What we are in the business of saying is some foods fuel us better than other foods. And some foods cause inflammation, whereas other foods don't. And every body is different and every body responds to foods in a different way. However, there are some general foods out there that are inflammatory by nature and that just cause low grade inflammation for most people. And those foods tend to be grains, dairy, alcohol, sugars, and seed oils. Yeah. Um, and so if you can reduce and or eliminate some of those things um, from your daily diet, then you will bring down inflammation um, in a way that is healthier to you. Now, and I'm not talking about like acute inflammation. I want to talk about the difference. Yeah, acute <laughs> inflammation is different. It's like if I stub my toe, I'm going to get a, a surge of blood to my toe. It might swell up or whatever. That's acute inflammation. That's good. We want that. We want acute inflammation. That's how our body heal how our bodies heal. However, <clears throat> low grade chronic inflammation from um, poor diet and poor food choices and other things that we can't control like in nature yeah, and things. Um, can cause low grade inflammation that affects our internal organs, our brains, our bodies on a whole slew of level. It affects our Cellular mitochondria. Level. Yeah, our mi mitochondria and all of those things. Emmy is chomping at the bit. No, I, no, I'm, uh, this is, I'm super, <laughs> you're saying it all. It's fantastic. So anyway, we want to tackle those things head on as far as nutrition goes, because we can control that, right? We control the foods that we put in our bodies. We can control whether or not we're eating foods that are inflammatory by nature or not. Now, some people respond differently to, to different, um, to different foods and different stimulus. So I'm pretty sensitive to gluten. When I eat gluten, 
I almost have an immediate response to swell, like inflammation, right? I can't get my rings off. My hands feel swollen. My joints feel achy. That's like a pretty quick inflammatory response to gluten. Not everybody gets that, but some people do. So it's really just about being aware of your body and how you respond to certain things. Yeah, and I think she said it all, which is fantastic. I mean, there's a whole lot more detail as to how you can accomplish that. But one thing I just want to touch on, because in we do try to be careful. Like, we are willing to just put it out there for what it is, right? I think that the as a culture, we can be super sensitive to, like, labeling foods as bad, so to speak. But there are foods that heal and foods that harm. There just are. Not to say that we can't choose to incorporate some foods that harm because we enjoy them, but we should be real with ourselves about what it's actually doing to our bodies. Yeah. And so I choose to... <clears throat> I choose to have certain foods sometimes that are not the best thing for me, but I enjoy them and that's a choice that I can make. However, when we are continually eating inflammatory foods by nature, our cells will mutate over time and we can either choose to move more towards disease or we can choose to move further away from disease. We can choose to allow the foods that we eat to start mutating our cells and honestly that is what ultimately leads to disease like when we have a high level of inflammation in our bodies at a cellular level chronic low-grade inflammation that is ultimately what leads to disease it's what allows our cells to continue to mutate to create things like cancer and diabetes and heart disease and all of the things that we are trying to prevent and so <clears throat> One of, and there are several, but one of the most powerful things that we can do to uh, um, preserve our longevity and our health is to keep our chronic inflammation levels low. There are ways to actually measure that from a laboratory uh, perspective if you're working with a provider. One really good way is what's called an HSCRP. It's a high sensitivity C-reactive protein especially um, any type of integrative provider is likely going to order that for you. And you want that to be at a really low level. The higher it is, the higher chance you're gonna have to have some form of cell mutation or move towards disease. And so we don't say that as a scare tactic. It's just when you're looking at overall cellular health and you're looking at your whole body, it is a huge proponent. So when we're working with our clients, we absolutely want them to fit in the things that they enjoy, but we also want to educate on, okay, if this is something you really like, like if you really enjoy, you know, pretzels and cheese every afternoon, like, okay, like pretzels and cheese by nature are not awful, but those are two fairly inflammatory foods for the most part. So is there something that you could do like a simple Mills almond flour cracker that still gives you that crunch and that salt and you can pair it with something else? Or is the cheese component still important to you? Well, let's look at the cheese that you're having. Like we don't want to take away the luxuries of life from people, but we do want to educate on the impact on the body, on the brain, on your hormonal system, on your nervous system, and on your outcomes. Yeah. Um, because all of those things will also have an impact on how you store or shed fat. Totally. And so the bottom line is, is that when you're looking at the whole scope of things, like if you can primarily say foods from the ground, foods that walk around, foods from the sea, foods from the air, it's basically like as um, unadulterated like food as possible. <laughs> it's just keeping it simple. Um, and then when you look at, like Haley said, when you're looking at alcohol, seed oils, dairy, grains, and sugar, uh, not that you can't have those because I fit in some of those things, but it's really looking at like minimizing those things that even if you don't necessarily have an allergy to them, they do create low grade chronic inflammation. Yeah. And so that's something we are, we're love to work with our clients on if they're open to it. Um, and it's one of our pillars is just overall inflammation reduction. Yeah. So if you are curious about what your um, levels of inflammation are and you are going to the doctor to run a hormone panel or any kind of labs for that matter, you can always request to have your HSCRP tested. Um, and hopefully your provider can, can do that for you. So don't be afraid to ask. Yep. You got to be your own, um, proponent. You've got to advocate. advocate for yourself yeah. and what you need. So make sure that you ask if you're curious about that. On that note, stay tuned because we have something very exciting. You know what? You just cannot even help, help yourself. She can't. She can't. I can't. Okay. But, but yeah, stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was number one. Number two, which one do you want to tackle? Let's talk about hydration. Whoop whoop. Because hydration, you guys, if you are new here, yeah. um, welcome to Haley and Emmy's hydration chat. Because yes, we, seriously. we cannot preach hydration enough. It just, it is... Next to nutrition, I feel like hydration is so important and people don't get it. Yeah. And it's so easy and 
Honestly, there's no reason why anybody should be walking around feeling dehydrated or not even feeling dehydrated because sometimes you don't feel it. People shouldn't be dehydrated. If you picture this dehydrated, like a raisin, crunchy, like, like icky, a leaf. Um, ragged cell, and you think like my body's made up of this like raggedy, <laughs> crunchy stuff, or you picture this beautiful, voluptuous, Plump, full grape cell, and yeah. like you're like. I'm it's like around. it's like the grape versus the raisin you guys do you want to have skin like a raisin or do you want to have skin like a grape like really that's what it is right grapes i want to have skin like a grape. she's got skin like a grape you've, you've got, got skin great like skin. you've got great skin too um but that's really all it is honestly you guys it it really like in simplest terms like your skin can be dehydrated your body can be dehydrated and it shrivels up and it gets all dry and crusty and gross or it can be and big and full and And that's what happens to plump. your thinking, too, yeah. when you're dehydrated. Yeah, and all of your bodily organs. It you gets shrinky and gross, your thinking. <laughs> or it can be full <laughs> and vibrant when you're hydrated. <laughs> yes, yes, in very simple terms. Oh, yeah. But really, honestly, you guys, every single cell in your entire body needs to be hydrated. Even your poop, you guys. Think about that. Like, you can have this, like, dry, <laughs> icky stuff that doesn't want to come out very well. Or you can have, like, this like um, hydrated, full, smooth goodness that comes out. <laughs> smooth goodness, wow. <laughs> we, crossed, we crossed the line. I didn't think we were gonna go there today, but we did. I mean, for reals, if you think about yeah. it, like, no, it's true. Every, like, okay, let's just talk about some of the benefits for cook. Water is accessible to the vast majority of people in this world at very little to no cost. And at least it is available to every single client we have and Every person here on Instagram yeah. has access to clean drinking water, hopefully. Yeah. Like if you have a phone with the internet, you probably have clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so here's the deal. Energy, fat loss, better sleep. Ooh, wow, yeah. that's fun. So I like that. That, that, that was, was a, a bubble. bubble. Because we were talking yes. about like full grape oh cells. Gosh. Sorry, you guys. Sorry. We For get very on excited. Facebook, we got like a very different kind of thumbs up over it's on like in Instagram. A bubble, like in a water bubble. Wow. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> water will energize you. It will help with your sleep. It will help with your workouts and performance. It will help with your fat loss. It will help with your digestion. Um, it just like the list goes on. It helps with your hormones. It helps yeah. with your cognitive capabilities. Um, it just like 2 p.m. in the afternoon, if you are a slug instead of a hare. <laughs> rabbit. As in a rabbit. <laughs> Then consider drinking some cold water. Yeah. If you are hydrated at 2 p.m., chances are you will be more energetic than a dehydrated you that wants to take a nap. It's true. And honestly, you guys, you can walk down the streets and you can be like, dehydrated, hydrated, dehydrated, dehydrated, hydrated. You can see it in people's skin Same on their Same thing faces. with hormones. Hormonally imbalanced. Balance. Ooh, balance. Ooh, yeah. Hormonally imbalanced. Ooh, that person has a little too much testosterone. Ooh, yeah. that person's a little estrogen dominant. <laughs> right, totally. You guys, it is written, our skin tells the story yeah. of our nutrition. It really and does. And our hormones. And our hormones. And so, honestly, this is a simple takeaway, you guys. You need to be getting at least half of your body weight in ounces of water every single day, yeah. without question. For most people, that is absolutely manageable. Yep. And so what she means by that is if you're 150 pounds, a minimum of 75 ounces. Minimum. Minimum. Anything above and beyond that is, is gold. That's like liquid gold, you guys. You really, you really need to work on this. We don't say it because like it's trendy or because water's cool. I mean, water is cool, but like really it does a huge, huge, huge benefit to your body when you get enough water. If you are looking to increase your metabolism, if you are looking to lose fat, if you are looking to sleep well, reduce stress, all of those things, if you are just looking to feel better, yeah. the first thing you can do, and it shouldn't cost you any more money, is drink more drink water. More water. Yeah. Plain and simple. I, I feel like people overcomplicate yeah. it. I feel like they they make it more difficult than it should be. Yeah. If you have a hard time getting in water, a lot of people do, get a drinking vessel that you like. I have a Stanley water bottle. It has a straw. I drink twice as much water if I'm drinking out of a straw Same. than if I don't. And, and so, I hate to admit that because I don't love straws. But, I know. Um, for the environment, but... Well, I use a reuse. You yeah, use a reusable straw too. I do. But, um, but I also get straws when I go to restaurants. Yeah, you do. Yeah. That's okay though. You know what? <laughs> You're um, hydrated. <laughs> I know. Okay, couple just quick things on that. Um, to try to keep it simple, Haley mentioned having a water bottle that you really enjoy. 
If you can, when you first wake up, start your day with water, you guys, even before your coffee, which I know can be hard, but it's just a habit to get into. Make sure by midday that you are having a whole nother water bottle. Track your water, see how much you're drinking. Like it is amazing how quickly that can change. Make sure that you enjoy it. I drink an element, um, which is an electrolyte in my water in the morning. I really love the flavor of it. I don't love still plain water, but I have learned to love the coldness of it. If I add lemon to it, I enjoy it more. I wait to switch to fizzy water until the afternoon, but I love myself some fizzy water. So And fizzy water just, can count, you guys. As long as you're not just drinking fizzy yeah. water from the time you wake up until the time you go to bed, like count your fizzy water yeah. towards your your water. Unless your coach says, yeah, yeah. don't. And, then, you know, sorry, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. You guys, we have talked about inflammation. We have talked about hydration. Let's move on to deep and restorative sleep. Oh yeah. You guys, this is a biggie too. Yeah. And I think that sometimes we put sleep on the back burner. It's easy to get into the routine of life where you need to get up at a certain time of day. And so regardless of how your body's feeling, you push through your alarm clock maybe, or let's say I'll take myself as an example. Um, I've gone through seasons of my life where I've slept really well. I've recently gone through a season where I'm just not sleeping great. Um, and it's not because of anything I'm doing necessarily. My body is just like, I'm just in this like readjustment period with my body. And, um, and so I'm waking up at like four 30 in the morning. Now I get up and I exercise really early in the morning, every single day. If I were able to sleep past when I need to get up to go to the gym, I would do that. If I could sleep through my alarm and skip going to the gym and replace that with sleep, I would do that. That's how important, That's how important it is, sleep you guys. is. Movement is, yes, movement is critical. Yeah. It is important. But on a scale, when you, if you want to balance movement versus sleep, sleep is, should be weighted heavier than movement. So if you are losing sleep, because you're exercising, then you need to reevaluate that a little bit because I think that maybe you might see bigger goals, bigger gains, I should say, if you were getting more sleep than cutting your sleep short in order to get to the gym. One of the things that we do have, we mentioned earlier, is if you go to the toolbox of our website, mm -hmm. so macrobavens.life, and you click on toolbox, one of the tools that I love in there is called a deep restorative sleep mm -hmm. overview. We've done an entire live on this as well, but you guys, when we talk about sleep, it's not just quantity, it's quality. Yeah. And the quality of our sleep really matters because we want to be getting adequate amounts of deep sleep and adequate amounts of REM sleep. Um, our light sleep, not as much happens in that. And most of our deep sleep, and our deep sleep is where our cells are actually cleaning themselves out. And deep sleep oftentimes happens more in the first stage of your sleep cycle. And they're one of the reasons why sleep is so important quality sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep is because it is when our cells are recovering. It is what allows us to um, allow our nervous system to properly function, our, our endocrine system, our hormone system to properly function. Our brains it's, clean out all of those dead cells yeah. and our bodies. They, it's, it's like when our body cleans itself. It's, the housekeepers come in yeah. and they clean out all the junk. Like nutrition is foundational for us, mm -hmm. absolutely. But if you are doing all the things nutritionally and you're moving your body and you're staying hydrated um, and you're trying to be stress resilient and you're like skipping out on sleep, you are going to have a really hard time making the progress that you want to. Yeah. And so I, I will say too, like I've gone, and, and one of the things is, is that I went through a season years ago, well, and more recently too, um, but where I really struggled with sleep and it had a huge effect on me. And so both of us have done such a deep dive yeah. on restorative sleep. And that's actually one of the reasons why we created super sleep. We want our clients to do all the natural things first. Like, and there absolutely. are a lot of things that yeah. you can do, you guys. And we'll just talk about a few of them real quick. Yeah. Like if you are having a hard time sleeping at night, you need to make sure that your room is free of distractions. Yeah. That means pets, that means children. Um, whatever TVs, TVs yeah. your phone, iPad, whatever that is, like get rid of distractions in your bedroom. Also your room should be cold. Our bodies have to, it's really amazing what our bodies do before we go to sleep. Our bodies have to cool themselves almost a complete degree, one degree in order for our, in order to fall asleep. So if you are going to bed and you're really hot or your room is really warm, you might think about trying to cool yourself off before you get into bed because your internal core temperature needs to come down about one degree in order to go to sleep. So keeping a nice cool room 
keeping it dark, you guys, really dark. That is really helpful. Um, there are really so many things. You can have like a cup of peppermint tea before you go to bed, as long as you're not gonna be up peeing in the night. Um, a lot of things that you can do in order to set yourself up for a successful night's sleep. It is, and a, a couple of things to add to that, and these are all in our Deep and Restorative Sleep Overview, but. Which you can get at macromavens.life. Toolbox. In the toolbox. Um, <laughs> if you can make a list, like if you, if one of your things is that you're waking up in the middle of the night with a racing brain, chances are you might have um, a dysregulated cortisol, and that's a whole nother conversation. We did a whole live on that. Um, it's been a while, yeah. but you can go to the YouTube channel and check it out. But one of the things that can really help people is just making a list of the things that you need to be able to focus on the next morning or a plan for the next day before you go to bed. Keeping a notebook by your bed. Haley mentioned having a cold, dark, comfortable room, making sure that you don't have a TV on, trying to limit screens or any type of artificial light a couple hours before you go to bed, trying to limit any food or beverage intake a couple hours before you go to bed so that your digestion can appropriately work and not work against you while you're sleeping or keep you up or that so you're not having to wake up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and then struggle going back to sleep. Um, also some form of breathing before you go to bed, um, meditation, prayer, all of those things can help you tap into your parasympathetic nervous system, which is going to allow you to relax and get into that deeper sleep faster. Um, both Haley and I wear aura rings and we track our sleep and it's amazing. Um, even looking at like the community of data and all of that and what some people are doing in the way that it affects sleep. And then if you're doing all those things and you're still struggling, there are some supplements and some things that can make a difference. And that's where our super sleep comes in. We really designed it to both tackle the cortisol component as well as getting deep restful sleep early on in the night without there being any type of a, um, a like hangover, no hangover effect, effect in the morning yeah. and um, it's amazing. We love it. Yep. Um, but we do like, there is no such thing as a magic pill and we want people to be doing all the natural things first. The supplement is natural as well, but like as far as not having to um, lean on a supplement and less necessary. Yeah. And we got another bubble. The supplement <laughs> you guys is exactly what that is, right? It supplements what you're already doing. If yeah. you're already doing all the things and you're sleeping great, don't bother with the supplement. Yeah. If you're doing all the things and you're still struggling with your sleep, you might think about trying super sleep. Yeah. I don't take it all the time. I was taking it all of the time for a long time. Um, and then my sleep improved and I quit taking it. And so I haven't taken it for a bit. Um, and actually last night, last night was the first night I slept until my alarm clock went off. It was really, really fantastic. And you took it? No, I didn't. I oh, did yeah. it last night. Yeah, so I love that. Yeah. Anyway, okay. take it if you need it. Yep. So, okay, you guys, we've talked about uh, reducing inflammation. We have talked about hydration. We have talked about deep and restful sleep. Let's talk about stress resiliency. Let's do it, you guys. Okay, this is a biggie, right? Big, big. Because it really is impossible to eliminate all stress from our lives. Yeah. We are human, we live in a broken world, and there is going to be things, there are going to be things that are going to stress us out on any given day and we are living a life that has stress just all around and that's okay. It is how we deal with the stress, how we learn to be stress resilient and how we can move beyond the stress that can help us get through our days. Yeah. And there are so many things that we can do um, in order to become more stress resilient that will make dealing with the stress easier. You know, I've heard Gosh, 20 plus years, like having worked in healthcare and all of the things like the ramifications of stress mm -hmm. on the body. But I think that I have just seen it so firsthand in myself and in people around me, how absolutely paralyzing stress can be to our health. And even in terms of like what can happen on a cellular level from our stress, like it is powerful. Yeah. And so we do, like Haley said, I do think that we can't eliminate all stress. We can eliminate some of it. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that we would suggest you first do, and we also have this tool on our toolbox, Macromaven's Macro Life, <laughs> is taking an inventory. Like we yeah. take you through a step-by-step -step process. First, take an inventory of what are the areas that are creating the most stress in your life. And of those areas, are there things that you can eliminate? And then the things that you can't, like what is a low-hanging fruit? Mm -hmm. let's, let's get rid of those. The things that you can't eliminate how can we respond to those differently so they don't have as much of a negative impact on us from a cellular level? Yeah. And so the tools that we really want to work with our clients on, all of you on, is learning how to recognize, how to evaluate, and then also how to respond. Yeah. Um, and a big part of that is awareness. A big part of that is having tools to navigate the stressors right in front of you but also understanding how to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system, which is going to, your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest. 
And so there are a lot of things, if you are practicing gratitude, it literally changes you cellularly. Like it is it's so unbelievable, powerful. you guys. So pow powerful. And we also have, hmm. oh, we're reconnecting. We also have a joy strategy overview on the toolbox of our website to like really tap into what are the things that authentically bring you joy? And are you doing those things? Because when you are living a life where you are, doing things that bring you authentic joy, you will naturally be more stress resilient. Yeah. What is your prayer meditation life look like? What is your breath practice, if anything, look like? What are you doing that helps, like exercise for me is a huge stress management mm -hmm. tool. For other people, that brings stress. And so it just, it really depends on, on who you are as an individual, what your stressors are, what can you eliminate, of what you can't lim eliminate, how can you manage and respond to those things differently, how are you, how are you, sorry, we're having a couple connections. That's issues. weird, yeah. And so go over to the toolbox of macromavens.life, and if that's something in particular, it's almost an issue for everybody. Look at our um, stress resiliency overview and look at our joy strategizing overview. Yeah. And those things can make, it, it takes you step by step through it. And I challenge you on every single one of these to look at these tools and to do at least one thing. Just um, one. Just one. one. One thing you can yeah. implement. Yeah. Okay. Last We've one. We've done inflammation or reducing inflammation, I should say. We have done stress resiliency. We've done deep and restorative sleep. We've done hydration. And now let's talk about movement. Movement. Now, you guys, sometimes people like to flip-flop the importance. I think yeah. in people's brains, the importance of movement oftentimes comes ahead of nutrition. And here at Macro Mavens, we would like you, we would like to challenge you yeah. to think of nutrition first and movement second, maybe even third, right? Fourth or fifth, maybe. Or fourth or fifth, yeah. <laughs> it's not, we have created a culture in the West where movement is number one. Movement absolutely is paramount. It is important. It is not the most important thing. However, it is one of our five pillars and it is absolutely something that we take very seriously here. And, <laughs> and it is like, for one, Emmy mentioned it, like for me, it is an absolute stress reducer. Yeah. If I move my body, my stress resilience is higher and I am better able to handle the stress in my life. So it can look a million different ways. You guys, you don't have to climb a mountain. You don't, but you can, but you can. I love to climb mountains. Yeah, <laughs> but you can, it doesn't, every time you get out to exercise, it does not have to be a big deal. Yeah. You do not have to go to the gym every time. It can look as simple as going outside and going for a walk, gardening in your yard, playing with your children outside, um, playing with your dog in your house, what, whatever you just need to get up and move your body. We encourage our clients to get at least 10,000 steps a day. If that is not possible for you, having an understanding of how many steps you do get in a day and trying to increase that is yeah. the key. And there is no shame in doing kitchen laps. I do them yeah. all the time. I walk around my kitchen all the time in order to make sure that I get in enough steps or more. If I'm feeling a little angsty or anxious, um, you guys, it just, is really simple, right? Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. Let me just say this. I think that a lot of people like Haley was saying, flip flop it and they kill themselves in the gym when they could really just make a few changes nutritionally and get so much further. So body composition, when we look at um, visible muscle mass and um, shedding of fat. So when you, a lot of people are after that, like lean, clean look, high and tight, as we like to high call and it. Tight. <laughs> and so that is going to be 80% plus what you eat and the rest, how you work out. Yep. You cannot exercise your way out of a poor fork. You just can't. You can't do it, you guys. If it, you are eating garbage every single day and busting your butt in the gym, most likely your body is not going to change in the way that you want it to. If we can dial in, and we're not saying we're not saying eliminate, like just mm -hmm. dial in what you're eating, um, the ratio as to what what you're eating, and work with you even on getting your calorie count up so that you do have more flexibility within that, so that you can adhere more consistently to whatever it is that you're doing your body comp shifts will be huge. Haley and I can attest to that. Like we killed ourselves in the gym for years and years. For we years. still love to work out, yeah. but it wasn't until, and I understood clean eating. I just did, but it wasn't until I really understood what my body needed from a macronutrient standpoint that I was able to make the body composition shifts. I didn't think I could because I just didn't think I had the genetics for it. When in reality, I just wasn't fueling my body appropriately. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. But like on movement, I will say, 
bliss, low intensity, steady state movement is really important for everybody. So just moving your body throughout the day, like Haley said, a minimum of 10,000 steps, or if you're starting below that, working your way up. But outside of that, if somebody is looking for visible muscle or a toned look, you can't see muscle you don't have. So that is where we start to work with our clients on the importance of resistance training. And so that's a whole nother discussion, but movement is one of our pillars. It's just not the most important pillar. We need to move our bodies. It's so important for our brains, for our bodies, for all of it. Yeah. Stress resiliency included. But nutrition is number one. It, it just is. is. It just is, you guys. Yeah. That said, you got to start somewhere. If you yeah. are motivated to go to the gym and move yeah. your body more than you are to shift the way you're eating, Keep fine. That up. Keep it up. Go yeah. to the gym. We would encourage everybody on the planet to um, get into some type of weightlifting regimen, yeah. um, resistance training. You guys, lifting weights is not just good for the your physique. It is yeah. good for your overall health. It is good for your... Um, metabolism. It is good yeah. for your cognition. It is good for, um, organ function. It is just good. Everybody wants, well, I, maybe not everybody, but most people want to be able to like feel strong and to see that nice, lean, beautiful muscle, right? Well, the only way you can see it is if you have it. The only way to have it is if you work for it. Muscle is one of those things that is just not can't pay for it. It's just not free. <laughs> it's not free. You can't pay for it. You have to put in the work and the time and, um, and yeah, yeah you just have to, and yeah. it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. Yeah. So, okay, you guys, so let's just do a little wrap up. Our passion, our goal um, is in getting to work with clients, which we are so privileged to be able to do, not only to have them meet their physical goals, but to truly feel their best, to thrive, to have longevity, to have balanced hormones, to have energy, to have deep restorative sleep, to have joy, to have positive relationships. Like all the things that come with a thriving life. And that is why having these pillars of wellness that we can educate on along the way makes such a difference because when our clients graduate, we want them to have met their physical goals and yep. to be at a higher calorie count so that they have the flexibility and sustainability they want. But we also want them to have made small habit shifts that are just part of their lifestyle. And we see it day in and day out. And that is why our clients, they keep their results and it is amazing and we love it. And so, Today, we wanted to just talk about those five pillars. We have so much more detail on them. Um, we've done individual sessions and educational trainings on every single one of them with a whole lot more detail. We have overviews on our website, macromavens.life, on the toolbox. And we are here for it. And we would love to work with you yep. if it's something that you're interested in. We work one-on-one -on -one with our clients. It's not a cookie cutter. It's all on an individual basis. We have an amazing team of coaches and we always offer a free consult. So you can go to macromavens.life, click the hop on board button and one of us will reach out and we'll go from there and see if we're a good fit. Yeah, you can also go to macromavens.life, click the toolbox section and you'll find all of our tools except for the anti-inflammatory protocol that is um, specific to our clients. If you are curious about that, um, fill out the hop on board, a uh, coach will reach out to you and we can chat about whether or not you would we would be a good fit for you, you would be a good fit for us. Um, as a client and yes. then you can get our protocol for that. <laughs> um, also, if you are interested in our supplements, we have two, we have Mighty Metabolism and Super Sleep. They are the perfect marriage. Yeah. Um, you take one in the morning and one at night and you can get those at the shop page yeah. at macromavens.life. Thank you guys, this was so great. We, um, <laughs> this was so this, great. This was really I great. I love we, talking we, about we this We really stuff. had a great time yeah, today. We, we did, I hope you guys did as well. And as always, if you guys have questions, yeah. let us know. Like we are so thankful for the platform to get to educate and we're constantly challenging ourselves and learning more and we're just so appreciative of you guys showing up asking the questions engaging and being on this journey with us so yeah, totally. thank you so much thanks guys and we'll see you well we'll see you every day but yeah. we'll be back for another live next monday yep okay see ya Bye.